Welcome to the Hey Big Bro Show. My name is Omar Bravo, and this is your second opinion on faith, family, friends, and finances. This is episode number four, and the topic is relationship rules. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about relationships. More specifically, relationship rules for a happy life. A lot of you might think, what the heck does this guy know about relationships? And uh, for evidence, I can say that I've had enough relationships or enough failed relationships to know what not to do, for sure. And I'm also in a relationship of 10 years now uh, with my wife, Bonnie, and we work on our relationships every day. And we found a couple things that really help uh, make every day just better and and make sure that we stay on the same team. And I just want to share those with you today. So rule number one, say, I heard, not you said. This is super important, and it's a, it's a tiny little tweak, and it kind of changes the whole perspective of how arguments usually start. Most arguments start because uh, one, one side or, or the other, the, the spouse or, the, or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever it may be, uh, there was a miscommunication that happened. And when that miscommunication happens, one of the parties will say, you said this, and what that does is that immediate puts, immediately puts the other person on the defensive. And they say, I didn't say that, I said this, and then it turns into a literal he said, she said argument. Uh, but rather than get into that and then go down that, the, the crazy cycle, go down that horrible spiral into you know, bringing up old stuff, uh, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is rather than say, you said this, what you want to say is, I heard this. Okay, it's a, it's, a small, it's a small change, but what that does is it takes the accusation away. It, it takes the blame putting on the other person. It takes that away, and instead it puts the, puts the blame on yourself. And so here, here's an example. Uh, hey, uh, me and my wife are talking. Hey, B, what's for dinner? And she says, what do you mean what's for dinner? You said we were going out to dinner tonight. I haven't made anything, right? Right there, she puts the blame on me. As an alternative to that, she could say, what's for dinner? I heard this morning that that we were going out for dinner, at which point a miscommunication happens. That's okay, miscommunications happen. I'm not feeling accused because she said that she heard it. She didn't say I said it, she said she heard it. I could have said something like, man, I love going out to dinner, or I would really like to go out to dinner tonight. I didn't specifically say we were going out to dinner, but I can see how she heard that, or how that, uh, that conversation uh, got, got miscommunicated, at which point she says, I heard we were going out. And I say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry you heard that. I, I, didn't, I definitely didn't mean to say that. Uh, and then there's no accusation. There's no, there's no uh, downward spiral into a he said, she said. It's simply there was a miscommunication, and we leave it at that. That, that rule has saved us so many times. There's so many times where I tell Bonnie, because I know I just use an example that, that she, she had heard a miscommunication, but there's so many times where I tell Bonnie, oh, I heard X, Y, Z. And, uh, and she says, well, I said, and, I'm, and, and I back off and I say, I didn't say you didn't. I'm act- actually, I'm positive you did say exactly what you thought you said. I'm the one. I'm the bad guy. I misheard it. We don't have to have an argument about this. We just have to correct it and move on with life. We love each other, and so we can pivot, and we don't have to get into that downward spiral. The thing is, this works in not just marital relationships or or intimate relationships. This works in business relationships. I was in a meeting the other day, and one of my business partners uh, said something, and I and. It was it was news to me, and so I say, "Oh man, I I didn't I didn't catch it that way the first time. I heard, and I explained what I had heard, and he said, "Well, I didn't say that." And I say, "I didn't say you said that. I said I heard." At which point he wasn't feeling accused. I took all the blame, and it wasn't a big deal. We moved on. We corrected the situation, and we were good to go. There wasn't any animosity. There wasn't any argument. It was just forward progress. Because at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. 
Rule number two, and this is specifically between uh, me and my wife, and I think this, uh, this really goes more in intimate relationships than it does in business relationships, but it could, it, it could work uh, either way. But in intimate relationships, especially between men and women, boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, the rule I have for my wife is I will do absolutely, positively anything, anything in the world for you except for one thing. There's one thing that is absolutely off limits and I refuse to do it. And that is even try to read your mind. I can't do it. I'm not a mind reader. And because I'm willing to do anything for you, all you have to do is tell me. If you want to try to make me read your mind, it's just not going to work. It's not going to happen. I'm going to get it wrong. You're not going to be happy. You're going to be frustrated. And so here's the condition. You can, you can, I'll do anything for you. Just don't make me read your mind. That is something that has, has really saved us. Um, and I know uh, when Bonnie and I first started implementing this rule, or should I say when I started implementing this rule, there was some hesitation on Bonnie's side because she, she, wanted, uh, she wanted me to know her so deeply and so intimately that I knew what she wanted. Um, and as romantic as that sounds, uh, especially for the ladies, that sounds romantic that, you, that, that your husband or your significant other just knows you so much that they can just read your mind and they know what you're thinking before you and you, and you don't have to tell them. Um, but uh, she got over it super quick as soon as I said, okay, I understand that and that is super romantic and, and it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite a goal. Uh, but let, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to implement the same rule on you. I'm not going to tell you what I want. I just want you to read my mind. And I just want you to know me so well that I don't have to tell you anything. And that you can just know what I want. And that immediately stopped. That stopped the conversation. Because it's like, hold on, that's ridiculous. That's, how could I ever read your mind? How could I ever know all of those things? Even if I know you and love you, People are complex. We talked about this in a couple a couple episodes ago. Uh, ago. People are on complex, and people change, and so it really just isn't fair to ask that. Number one, it's unrealistic. Number two, if somebody agrees uh, to to basically do anything for you, all you have to do is tell them. Then it seems like it's not that much to ask. Just tell them. Just go ahead and tell them. So. To this day, I, I won't even try, won't even, not even an ounce of effort goes into mind reading. I won't do it. I'll do anything for her. If she asks me, hey, here's a ridiculous request I want X, Y, Z, or I want you to do this and that, I will kill myself trying to accomplish that, but I will not try to read her mind. And that has, uh, that has uh, worked out, I think, really well for both of us. Here's rule number three. Okay, uh, and this one's with regards to finances. They say that the overwhelming majority of all, uh, all arguments and all divorces are really start and kind of end with financial stress. And so with regards to finances, uh, Bonnie and I, again, have, have a, a, a really solid rule. She can have anything she wants, anything in the whole wide world, anything she wants. And I can have anything I want. If I want it, I can go get it. You can have anything you want. You just can't have everything you want. That's the rule. You can have anything you want. You just can't have everything you want. You can you get everything you need. If it's a need, covered. We're going to we're going to work as hard as we need to in order to make sure uh, all needs are covered. With regards to wants, you can have anything. You just can't have everything. Hey, you want $300 jeans? Awesome, no problem. Concert tickets? Wonderful. You can. We, 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 you want to travel? Let's travel. Oh, you want all that and groceries? Well, that's not going to happen, right? You want to have a, the, the awesomest car and a huge car payment? No, no big deal. But you can't have that and, 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 and. You got to pick and choose. You got to pick and choose what's most important to you, and you can have it. But we're going to have to make sacrifices everywhere else. So that 
rule right there makes you makes you think. You look at you look at all the opportunities or all the different things that you want, and you pick and choose what's most important because you can have anything, just can't have everything. That said, I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank you for letting me be your second opinion. Be sure to like the page, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, share this post, write a review, and most importantly, if you have any topics you'd like me to tackle, hit me up on social media or send me an email and I'd love to give it a shot on one of the future episodes of the Hey Big Bro Show. Until next time, Godspeed.